Um, okay, so now I'm here with Keenan Goodnight, a prototyping engineer from TTI Floor Care, who's one of our users of GrabCat Shop. So Keenan, thank you for coming. Thank you for joining us today. Yeah, totally. Thanks for having me. And I wanted to ask right away, what is TTI Floor Care and what kind of stuff do you guys do? So TTI Floor Care is a, uh, it's a holding company for three major brands of floor care products. Um, Hoover, Dirt Devil, and Auric vacuums are all made by TTI Floor Care. So you may not have heard of TTI, but you've probably heard of those vacuum brands. So all those are designed here in-house. Yeah, that's like every vacuum company I've ever heard of. You know, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a pretty okay. big so, operation. And I can imagine, you know, if you're making new vacuums all the time, a lot of internal pieces, you know, you have to be prototyped and 3D printed. What type of 3D printers do you guys use there? So we have a fleet of 11 3D printers right now. We're potentially going to get more, but I believe we're at 11 right now. So we've got three, well, let's, we've got five Stratasys machines. We've got two 170s, a 370 and then two 450s, and those are all FDM 3D printers. And then we've got nice. three SLA printers. We've got two Form 3Ls from Form Labs, and we've got a Form 3, that's their smaller one. And then we've got two Ultimaker S5s, also FDMs, and then we have a uh, HP Multijet Fusion 5210, which is their largest um, Multijet Fusion printer which is kind of like its own category, but yeah. That's awesome, yeah, so you've got, you know, FDMs, you've got the form labs, which are nice and smooth, you've got the Ultimakers, and then you've got the, the powder bed fusion, you've got a whole wide range there, that's, that's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. So yeah, how was the setup before you guys started using GrabCat Shop? How did people, you know, how many people did you take orders from and how did they get the orders into you? So I actually started right around about a month after we switched to GrabCat Shop, but I believe what the system was was just people sending in emails and attaching STL files. Um, <laughs> I, I think there might have been some Google Cloud storage involved, but it was sort of, you know, piecemeal thrown together. I don't think there was like a like a system level approach to storing files and notifying people that things were done, et cetera. Yeah, no, we see that a lot. Like, you know, a lot of Google Drive, a lot of Google Docs, um, Excel spreadsheets, storing 50 different folders in your email system. You know, we see that a lot. And it doesn't, you know, it's workable for a while, but how many um, how many engineers do you guys have sending in orders? Is it 10 engineers or 50 or 100? Like, at what point, you know? Uh, so you guys... since the pandemic, the company's actually hired quite a few people. I don't know the current, like headcount of engineers, but I would say it's probably closer to a hundred than fifty and growing. So it's really <laughs> sizable. Um, but there's design engineers, and then there's product line support engineers, and there's all sorts of different engineers. But uh, and then there's industrial design, and just you know, there's all sorts of subcategories. But um, we, we have at least people submitting prints right now. I think it's in the sixties. And there's plenty of engineers beyond that that don't submit stuff, so. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, because imagine if just even sending one email to each of those people a week, that's 60 emails of, you know, where's my order? Or what kind of material you know, is it done yet? So yeah, that sounds like a perfect use case for GrabCAD Shop. You know, a bunch of different technologies, FDM, Formlabs, Ultimaker, Powderbed, a bunch of different emails in a fast moving environment. So how is the setup now? with GrabCAD Shop? Like, how has it changed? How do you guys use it? You know, mm -hmm. stuff like that. So, I mean, we we use it as our baseline, you know, system for re requests, not just of printers, by the way. We also have people requesting in, like, laser cutting jobs and paint requests. But basically, we operate in a shared services lab. So anyone that's working on a Hoover or Dirt Devil or an Auric project, or sometimes even another TTI project, that's outside of, excuse me, outside of uh, floor care specifically, we're shared services. So we'll take in jobs from all sorts of different corners of the company and they'll put in a request. And then, you know, we've got this large feed that's populated with all sorts of different requests, but it's basically our, our ground level sort of management system for where prints are at, or, you know, the queue basically. Right. You can see where everything's at. You can kind of sort it. Um, do you guys do anything? 
anything like at the end of the month to see how much was printed or how much material was used, like any kind of end of month, like adding up? It's not, uh, we don't have a formal like system like that. I mean, I do track our material usage and order and all that stuff, but it's not formalized on the month because we'll have slow and quick months. And sometimes we may need to buy stuff before a month. So it's more dynamic, I'd say, than that, but we do use it to, I would say we use it um, a lot for scheduling. Like a lot of people, cause there's the date functions. So a lot of people are like using that to sort of be like, well, this is just supposed to be done at this date. So I'll schedule this meeting, you know, the day after or whatever. Yeah, no, that, that's, that's perfect. Yeah, that's exactly what we, we had in mind. We had a, we put in the, there, what date do you need it by? And then what date can the person actually deliver it by? We put two dates in there for yeah. that. Uh, for that purpose, um, so you guys um, and just kind of getting deeper into what you do with GrabCat Shop. Do you guys use the the comment feature on the right hand side, or do you guys use the the calculator feature for the the pricing quotes? Um, so to kind of communicate back and forth. Uh, we are looking into because everything that we do is internal R and D. We don't, I mean, we have a budget, but we don't really need to like we're not offering as a third party servicer. So like I don't need to necessarily worry about charging people for time on the machines because it's all internal for us. Um, right. There have been a few instances where we've been like kind of interested in figuring out what our costs are like per minute of, you know, print time. Um, <laughs> but it's, I'm sorry, what was, can you say that the first part of the question again? Um, yeah, yeah. So there's, there's two features. There's like a little cost calculator in GrabCatch yeah. shop and you guys don't do internal costs, but there's a comment feature on the right hand side. Oh yeah, the comments. And we, yeah, we put that in there to kind of cut down a lot of the emails. So I want to see if you guys use the comment feature for like, you know, hey, this part is ready, or um, I need more questions on yeah. this, or stuff stuff like that. In the we use side. that heavily. Um, so any sort of specific request that's like not a direct print feature, people will call out in the comments. So like, if they want something sandblasted, or if they want something clear coded. Or if they want, um, you know, something to be split in half and they sent the wrong file, like any sort of additional information on prints and stuff like that, they'll put in the comments. And it is helpful, like you said, to not have like a separate discussion happening because it's happening right next to, you know, the workflow. Um, right. With each job. Yeah. We, yeah. We, the idea there was we didn't want someone to keep a bunch of email folders to have to remember what they said. Mm -hmm. So that's why we put it right there. So that, that was our hope. Very cool. I, I also um, send people notifications when their prints are done. I'll just throw a comment. I mean, I'll mark it complete, but I'll also comment out and let them know. No, that that's that's a perfect way because we, we didn't want to have people get too many notifications because, you know, some systems, they send a hundred different notifications. I'm learning, you know, um, I'm learning a, a language through an app and every five minutes, the app sends you a notification. So we tried to keep that number down. So that's the perfect use is the comment will, it, only when the human wants a notification, you put a comment in and it sends it. It doesn't do it for every stage in a process. It doesn't do it for like printing, cooling, you know, yeah. sandblasting. Very cool. So yeah, overall, you know, that, that's about all the questions I had. Overall, you know, how do you like GrabCAD shop? How's it, how has it sped up your process? And, you know, kind of, what are you guys looking to do in the future? I mean, it's definitely helped a lot. We, um, let me actually pull it up. I just want to see, we, we use it a lot. and. Um, there's a, I know there's a ticker in the bottom. So right now we've got 40 active orders and we've processed 1,225. So <laughs> we've already wow. reached the, I mean, we started using this in January, I believe. We've already, re or I don't know exactly when we, but we're, we've already, you know, passed a thousand orders, you know, so. That's awesome. And that doesn't mean a thousand prints. That means like, you know, sometimes an order is 30 parts, so the fact that it kind of breaks into sub like you can have a project with a bunch of parts and maybe one part then you've had a quantity like that's all very helpful so that's awesome yeah and so i'm glad you guys like it you know thanks for your time you know we're gonna make it better and better we're gonna add features in there to you know kind of group orders together into jobs we're gonna make the you know do things with the estimation and make it hook up to more machines and add more materials so we're we're going to keep making GrabCAD shop better and better, you know, and thank you guys for using it. And thanks for making your, you know, printing process faster. Yeah, no, I, I mean, it's great software. Um, it's, I don't really have 
like an alternative to compare it to. I just know that emailing <laughs> all this stuff back and forth or, I mean, you could do something with Excel, I guess, but no one has time to like, you know, do that, so. Yeah, and and, and again, honestly, in, in the world when we go out there, the vast majority of people are still using some sort of manual method, right? They're still using Excel or an email folder or even like a whiteboard like behind you. So, yeah, you know, that's what we're trying to, you know, trying to automate and, and electronize and go to industry 4.0, moving to a software system. So, yeah, it, it's um, all we're trying to do is just make folks a little bit faster in their just day to day. Just simple system, make it faster. And some some print or slicer softwares that are cloud based already sort of do this, but that doesn't work if you have three different brands of printers. You know what I mean? Like I think Iger for uh, Mark Forge kind of does this, but yep. if you have you know, a bunch of non Iger printers, you can't track everything, you, you know, so it doesn't really work. This kind of works as an overarching, like bird's eye view of the whole shop. Um, so, yeah. That, that's awesome. Yeah, that's what we try to make. It, we try to make it the backbone of the system, right? So it's tech, it has to be technology agnostic. It has to be printer agnostic. So I'm glad to hear that. We, yeah, we tried to, we struggled for that for a while. Do we make it just Stratasys or do we branch out? And to be the true back, backbone of a 3D printing shop, it had to branch out, so mm -hmm. that that's awesome. Um, yeah, but yeah, I'll, I'll I'll end it there. You know, thank you so much for your time. You know, and and thanks for thanks for spending time with. Yeah, us. happy to do it. Thank you.